G'day Ziggy D here, back with another guide to the uh, 1.2 Forsaken Masters uh, crafting system in Path of Exile. Now in the last video I talked a bit about how to craft like yourself an endgame weapon and it was a bit more of a complex and in-depth process. But uh, in this one I want to just talk about the, the general idea of uh, improving your gear or fixing gear with the Master Crafting System. And this is like the most obvious and the starting point for what this system is intended for. The other one was kind of a more slightly advanced application. So, let's just go over some of the things I've done in the past. Obviously, uh, you can fix a, a weapon by adding uh, increased physical damage or flat physical damage or whatever else you need on your weapon if it's got a spare affix slot. Essentially, the way the Forsaken Master's crafting system works is you can use these benches just here to add an affix to an item. Up to Within the normal rules of crafting an item, you can have up to six affixes, three prefixes, and three suffixes, and you can find a list of these various different things. Uh, there's a spreadsheet I'll put in the description below for you guys. And uh, what you can do is uh, you can really make it a bit easier to get past those gear hurdles in a game. Let's say you're, you're really struggling, you know, you've got pretty okay gear but you just can't get any upgrades or you can't find the right upgrades that fix your resistances problem. You're sitting there at 40 fire resist or, you know, 50 something fire resist but your other resists are fine, you've got decent life, everything's fine, but you're just missing that one thing. Well, using this system you can you can start to fix those problems or if you find a decent item that could be sellable, it's not sellable, you can you can craft that and then sell it or you can even just help craft yourself upgrades. You, you are now looking for items with potential, not items that are actually just good for you. And uh, this is good because it's a nice stepping stone before that really expensive, crazy, exalting crafting that less than 1% of players will ever do. So, we have for here an example item that I'm going to try just here. We have this pair of boots that I found. These boots have a good fire resist roll, an okay lightning resist roll, an okay movement speed roll, and rarity. Not a bad little pair of magic fine boots. However, what are they missing? They're missing one of the, mo one of the more painful things, life. These don't have any life. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use these without life, like they're okay-ish magic fine boots, it's going to be difficult to sell these for a chaos, but with life, these would be a nice pair of boots. So, let's craft some life on them. I'm going to be going to Haku's Armour Workbench, because he does uh, basic crafting on armour. So we can take a look at this spreadsheet that I pointed out earlier to find um, what is actually available for us to craft on this item before we even look at it in the master, or you can just use the master to see what's available anyway. But I'll teach you this way because it gives you a bit more of an idea of how items work. So down boots here at the bottom, we've scrolled over to armor boots, and you can see that life and rarity are both prefixes. Uh, we also have movement velocity as a prefix. Now this item does not have any armor rolls. So the other options are armor, all of the armor rolls. So we have essentially two of three prefixes. The other, the item also has uh, two resistances. So there are actually a suffix and a prefix available because resistances count as suffixes, as does any of the other things in this list. So what we can actually do is we can craft either a prefix or a suffix on this. Now if this had three resistances, then we wouldn't be able to craft like an extra resist on that. Or if this had something like an armor roll, then we wouldn't actually be able to craft the life and the item wouldn't be very usable. But because it has those open slots for both, we have a fair few options with this. But the best option is obviously life. Now for one chaos, we can craft up to 54 life. Even 45, the bottom end is still okay and still usable, but 54 would be really nice. So let's use this one chaos just here to craft this. And we got... Oh, the 54 life! After my shenanigans with the earlier bow crafting, we've now actually done something pretty decent. And this is now a decent pair of boots. I sell these for a couple chaos easy, and uh, maybe I can find someone else who needs to use them. But uh, if, I, if I was using armor type boots, I would be able to use these for myself as well. So not too bad at all. So this here is another example of this system that I use, probably even a better example because I uh, I purchased this ring here, it had life, rarity and two resistances, pretty decent ring overall really, I purchased it for 6 chaos I think, but um, I then was able to use the master crafting system to turn this into a try resist item. I, it had the open suffix and I knew this when I was buying it, that it had the open suffix and uh, as a result I thought yes this is going to be a very very nice ring for me, like this is going to sort out a lot of problems for me. And uh, when you kind of compare this item without that fire resist to this item with the fire resist, the, the try resist makes it a much, much more attractive item. So certainly the value of the currency spent on crafting these uh, extra stats for a lot of the time, especially this early in the league for me, has been well worth it. So, you know, the cost of adding the physical damage, the cost of adding the life, the cost of adding the life to this pair of boots, all of those have been well worth it for me. And especially if you're sorting out, like, a resistance problem by adding this fire resist for, uh, let's see, how much did the, uh, how much did this one in particular cost? It looked like 
the fire resist cost me two alks. Wow, for two alks, that's really good value. Like, to be able to sort a resistance problem for that, that's really, really good. So I'm a big fan of this system, and you can kind of hopefully get a bit of an idea of how you can just improve your gear a little bit, uh, sort of take advantage of that, or look for items that are potentially good. So items that are missing just that one stat that makes them usable. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions about this crafting system, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.